Welcome to today's class. Today, we're going to study some basic algebraic properties of Fuchsian groups. And the main two results of today are going to be, first, a characterization of the commutativity of any two non-identity elements of the group of orientation-preserving isometries of the hyperbolic plane in terms of the sets of fixed points of the transformations involved. And second, uh, we are going to prove that uh, there is no Fuchsian group isomorphic to Z plus Z. Okay, so uh, recall that uh, at some point uh, I left as an exercise uh, to show that if one is given uh, an action of a group G on a set X, and if we are given two elements of the group, um, then when we take the set of fixed points of one of the two elements and the set of fixed points of uh, the result of conjugating that element by the other element of G, uh, then this other element, uh, its action on X induces a bijection uh, at the level of fixed points of uh, G and the conjugate of G by H. Okay. So this I left as an exercise some time ago, and from the, from from this fact, uh, we see that uh, if it happen, if, if G and H happen to commute, uh, so that uh, this conjugation is actually equal to G, uh, what happens is that H, which commutes with G, uh, restricts to a bijection, uh, to a permutation of the set of fixed points of G, right? which is uh, what I state here uh, in this level. So if they commute, uh, then, uh, then either of them restricts to a permutation of the set of fixed points of the other element. OK, so we are going to use uh, this lemma uh, to prove uh, this theorem, which, as I said, uh, characterizes uh, the situation when two elements of uh, two non-identity elements of PSL2R commute in terms of the sets of fixed points. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for two Mobius transformations in PSL2R uh, different from the identity function, uh, it is a, the following are equivalent. They commute. Uh, they have the same set of fixed points in U bar, right? So uh, being in PSL2R, each of them um, preserves U bar bijectively, right? So each of them acts, well, not only in C bar, but actually uh, acts on U bar, right? Um, so the sets, the sets of fixed points, their sets of fixed points according to the action on U bar coincide. Uh, and the third condition is that if uh, if you rather consider uh, the whole action on the whole of C bar and not only on U bar, uh, their sets of fixed points uh, also coincide. Right? So note that in general, uh, this set of fixed points is contained in this set of fixed points, and similarly, this set of fixed points is contained in this set of fixed points. And so somehow, uh, this equality of kind of smaller sets implies the equality of uh, this bigger set somehow that's what i'm saying and 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 all of this characterizes that uh, the two elements uh, commute so, so you see here here somehow we can already see a glimpse uh, of uh, how an algebraic property is encoded by uh, in geometric properties Maybe this is this, because this is uh, these are already like geometric properties Okay, so uh, let's prove this theorem. Mm -hmm. So uh, one implies two, so that uh, if they commute, uh, then their sets of fixed points in U bar, that is U union R bar, which is the circle at infinity uh, of U, uh, coincide with sets of fixed points. Mm -hmm. So suppose they uh, um, commute, right? So that uh, H, the action of H, 
restricts to a permutation of the sets of fixed points of the set of fixed points of G in U bar. And uh, same thing with G, right? G uh, restricts to a permutation of the sex, set of fixed, fixed points of the other transformation in U bar, right? So here, our set X from uh, the lemma is uh, U bar. We could take it uh, to be C bar as well, right? But, um, but so, uh, so far, I, I take it in, I take X to be U bar. Um, okay, so we are going to do it uh, case by case, uh, depending on the number of uh, fixed points of, um, of G. Right? So G, has either one or two fixed points in uh, U bar. This we already knew. Um, I mean, re remember that a known of G and H is taken to be the identity, the identity function. Um, so, so the only two possibilities is that uh, this set has only one element or exactly two elements. Um, okay, so. Uh, if this has exactly one element, right? So if uh, if only one element of U bar is, is fixed by G, then since H permutes the set, we see that then H also fixes the unique fixed point of G, right? So which means that that uh, we have this uh, inclusion, this containment, right? Because the unique element of this one is fixed by H as well. Okay, um, but then you see, if we now consider uh, the set of fixed points of H, we see that uh, uh, this equality um, uh, is uh, impossible because um, G permutes uh, this, this this set, right? So if this if if, this, if if H had exactly two fixed points, then you see one of them would be completely fixed by G, but then the other one would be forced, I mean, the other one would have to be fixed by G as well, right? Because G has to permute the whole set. But then that would mean that G has two fixed points and not exactly one, right? So this possibility is impossible. Mm -hmm. So, uh, H must have exactly one fixed point. Because again, uh, we are assuming that H is not the identity function. So, uh, having this inclusion and both of them having exactly one element, I mean, we must have equality. Okay. Uh, now, this uh, finishes the proof in, uh, in this case. So uh, let's uh, let's go uh, on to uh, let's analyze the uh, the case when uh, when G has exactly two fixed points in U bar. So so first of all we know that uh, H must have exactly two fixed points by case one because otherwise if H had exactly one fixed point I could repeat the argument here exchanging uh, switching G and H and then I would. Uh, conclude that G has exactly one fixed point. Um, so, because of our assumption here, uh, we deduce uh, this by case one. Okay, so now let's write, uh, you know, Z1 and Z2 for uh, the fixed points of G. Mm -hmm. And uh, notice the following, if, uh, if Z1 uh, is fixed by H, then Z2 has also, has to be fixed by H, right? And then, and then, uh, we have this set contained in the set of fixed points of H, uh, and then they must be equal, right? The set of fixed points of G equal to the set of fixed points of H. Um, why? Because I know that, uh, H, uh, permutes the set, um, because of, the, of, of our, our assumption here, right? Um, so I only need to show that, that Z1 uh, is fixed by H to, uh, to deduce uh, that, that the set of fixed points of G is equal to the set of fixed points of H. So 
uh, let us suppose, in the, in, the, in the sake of a contradiction, let us suppose that this is not the case. Mm -hmm. So let us suppose that Z1 is not fixed by H, right? so that Z1 is not in the set of fixed points of H. Mm -hmm. uh, then Z2 cannot be in that set either, right? because H permutes this set. So if, if, uh, if Z1 is not fixed by H, then H of it must be Z2, but then H of Z2 must be Z1. Mm -hmm. um, okay, now, uh, notice, since H is in PSL2R and has exactly two fixed points in U bar, in U bar, right? So the only elements of PSL2R that have exactly two fixed points in U bar are the hyperbolic uh, transformations. Right? I mean, the, the hyperbolic elements of PSL2R are the only ones that in U bar have exactly two fixed points. So H must be hyperbolic. But but think about it. I mean, think think uh, if uh, if necessary, think about the uh, the standard examples. Right? Um, hyperbolic modus transformations always have infinite order because any hyperbolic modus transformation uh, is given by multiplying by a positive real number different from one. Um, so so it cannot so, so multiplying that by by such a number uh, cannot have a finite order. Uh, okay, so H is then hyperbolic and hence has infinite order. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, once more, H permutes this set. Right? And actually, I'm assuming that uh, uh, it permutes it not, not trivially, right? Like this way. Okay, but then H square. Uh, which is also hyperbolic, hence also of infinite order, uh, fixes both Z1 and Z2. Okay, so uh, in particular, Z1 is a fixed point of H, H square. But also, I mean, we also know that anything fixed by H is of course fixed by H square, right? That's, that's obvious. Um, okay, um, and the set of fixed points of H is completely disjoint from the set of fixed points of G, right? because because of this, uh, which means that uh, it has this it has two elements which are not these ones. Mm -hmm. uh, so this one has at least those two elements, but one extra one, which is that one. So H square fixes three different points uh, of uh, U bar, right? but H square is, uh, is given as a modus transformation. So H square is the identity. Okay, this on the one hand, but on the other hand, H was of infinite order. And so we have a contradiction, right? On the one hand, we know it, it has infinite order. On the other hand, we know its order is uh, true. Um, okay, so that's impossible. But so what must be happening is that this assumption must be wrong. Okay. So it must be the case that Z1 is a fixed point of H. Right? And since H permutes uh, this set, Z2 must be as well. Right? So uh, what, I ob what we obtain is um, that the set of fixed points of G is contained in the set of fixed points of H, and they have the same cardinality, so they must be equal. Mm -hmm. And then, and this finishes, uh, one implies two, right? Because in any case, uh, we showed that uh, under this assumption, these two sets of fixed points must be equal. Okay, now, um, for two implies three, uh, I'm leaving it here as an exercise. Um, let me, it's an easy exercise, 
let me just um, very briefly uh, sketch or tell you why it is the case, why why hap why why this hap why this happens. Mm -hmm. um, the reason the reason is pretty much this uh, this um, picture that that you are seeing uh, um, beneath me. Um, right. I mean, the reason is that is is that we know that that um, if we are given an element of PSL2R, a non-identity element of PSL2R, uh -huh, then, uh, then if it is parabolic, um, its unique fixed point uh, in C bar lies in R bar. If it is hyperbolic, then it, its two fixed points in C bar lie in R bar. And if it is elliptic, then uh, then uh, its two fixed points in C bar come as a, as a pair of conjugate complex numbers. Right? And if you think about that, which is which is uh, which is what I'm sketching uh, uh, on uh, here uh, underneath the, my, my my image. Uh, that's enough, right? If if this if these are equal, let's say if if uh, if these are equal, mm -hmm. and let's say that that uh, there's only one element, mm -hmm. then uh, that is there is only one element here, which is then being assumed to be equal to this one. Um, then that element uh, lies uh, either in R bar or in U. Right? If it lies in R bar. And since it's only one, then we know that G and H are both um, parabolic, so they they have only one fixed point in C bar, right? Uh, but this one, that fixed point was assumed to be the same. Same. Uh, okay. If if that unique fixed point is in U, then both of them are elliptic, so the fixed points uh, they come as a pair of conjugate complex numbers. And one of them, we know that they coincide in one of them, so they both of them coincide. And uh, if, uh, if, if, if we assume that this has exactly two elements, then both of them have to be hyperbolic and those two elements have to lie on our bar. We are done, right? Because uh, any two, mo any Mobius transformation has at most two fixed points, any non identity Mobius transformation has at most two fixed points. So I pretty much gave you the proof right? uh, of uh, two in plus three it's, it's, it's really easy uh, given what we already know mm -hmm. and so let's uh, let's go on to three implies one so suppose that as Mobius transformations defined defined on the whole of uh, c bar uh, g and h have the same sets of fixed points mm -hmm. uh, and we want to show that they commute, that G H is equal to H G. Mm -hmm. uh, the argument, the argument is, is pretty much going to be, uh, you know, under this assumption, we move to, to standard example. And, the, and then in, when, in, in the case of standard examples, it is, it is easy to see that, that, uh, there must, ha there must, uh, we must have Commutativity, and so when you um, when you conjugate back, uh, you must have commutativity. That's pretty much the, the whole idea. Um, but then again, uh, uh, since uh, since sometimes we have exactly one fixed point, sometimes we have exactly two, and hence uh, somehow the, the we don't the the way to the, the standard example uh, associated is kind of is slightly different in each case. Then we divide in case. Although the, the basic idea is the same, the same in all three cases. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, let's start uh, assuming that uh, there's only one fixed point in C bar. Mm -hmm. uh, so G and H are parabolic. Uh -huh. um, G and H are parabolic, and so so if you if you if you forget about uh, u and u bar if you forget about the upper half plane and think only about uh, uh, Mobius transformations, um, 
we can conjugate uh, G and H simultaneously uh, to obtain a, a, a conjugate parabolic transformation which fixes infinity. Um, pretty much, we pretty much take any modest transformation that takes uh, this uh, unique fixed point um, to infinity, right? And conjugate by by that one, uh, as we saw um, some some classes ago. Um, right, but actually that modest transformation can be taken in PSL 2R, and this I'm going to to leave it to you as an exercise. Why? Why we can actually take in PSL two R? It, it, it's it's actually really easy, uh, really easy to see. I mean, uh, if you think about the the Poincaré disk model, um, the point is that 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 are given any two points in the, in the circle at infinity. So in, I mean, in the in the unit circle, um, given any two points, there's always a rotation that takes one to the other, right? And so um, so at the level of uh, of U bar, this must this must uh, this kind of this translates or this corresponds to being able to move any given point in this case the fixed points of the fixed point of g uh, to infinity uh, with using a using, using a new uh, that preserves you by objectives um, so I, I again told you why this new can actually be taken in psl 2 r and not only in psl 2 uh, z okay but so so we take such nu uh -huh, and uh, we see we see that uh, that uh, we have this property but then you see you see uh, these are uh, these are modus transformations that have uh, uh, infinity at at fixed point and as we saw that implies that both of them are translations right and actually we can actually say a little bit more. They are horizontal translations because uh, because nu being in PSL two R and G and H being in PSL two R by uh, by assumption of the of the theorem and uh, allow me to to deduce that actually this is in PSL two R, this is in PSL two R. Um, so, so, so these are translations that uh, preserve U bijectively. So they are horizontal translations. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in any case, they are translations, and well, it, it, it's obvious that translations always commute. Right? Translations of C bar always commute. So this one and this one commute, right? And so it follows that this commute kind of obviously right um kind of uh, just take 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 a take a, a commutativity equation for these two and and in that equation just cancel the extremes right no one no inverse and the left the leftmost and rightmost extremes of the of, the, of that equality and um, okay the, the fact that that these are actually horizontal will play a role later um, but for 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 now it doesn't matter, um, or it's irrelevant for now. Okay, so 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 we see that uh, if they have the same same set of fixed points in C bar, uh, and actually it's only one fixed point, then they come. Now let's assume uh, we are assuming that that, that 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 the set of fixed points are are equal. But now let's assume that it's two of them. Mm -hmm. And let's assume that both of them lie in R bar. Mm -hmm. So the case when, when, uh, when this is not the case, it is going to be analyzed later as a, as a third case. Mm -hmm. But in any case, uh, again, there exists a new in PSL 2R. Mm -hmm. And PSL 2R, not only PSL 2C, mm -hmm. uh, that moves the the these two fixed points uh, to zero and infinity mm -hmm. and again you see it's always possible to put one, to 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 move one of them to infinity uh -huh. and how do you move the other i mean think about multiplying with a positive uh, in, with a positive uh, real number Fix it, that fixes infinity and allows you to move any uh, to move points in uh, in uh, r bar 
uh, that that and the translation allows you to move uh, any 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 other given point to zero. Um, so uh, so such a new certainty exists. I mean, and it can certainly be taken in in PSL two R. Uh -huh. um, okay, and what we obtain is that uh, that the fixed points of the conjugations um, are uh, zero and infinity. Mm -hmm. And what we what we obtain is that uh, these ones are then hyperbolic transformations and given by multiplying with positive scalars. I mean, why, why, um, uh, why hyperbolic? Well, because, because of this, right? I mean, the, the fixed points are in R bar, um, and uh, this is in PSL2R, this is in PSL2R, because nu was in PSL2R. And G and H were as well by hypothesis. Uh, okay, but, uh, if I, if I'm given two positive real numbers, Multiplying by them uh, are, are are functions that that uh, commute, right? So again, these ones commute. Um, so the original ones commute too. Right? Uh, and then here again, uh, what what uh, what kind of what we really used was that uh, this this both of them are given by multiplying by non-zero complex numbers, let's say. Um, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't really need the, uh, those numbers to be positive real numbers. Um, but anyway, um, it, this is something that, uh, is not playing a role now, but will play a role later. Uh, and finally, now let's assume that, that, uh, G and H, uh, have I mean, we are assuming that in this, mm -hmm. uh, we are assuming that the, it's two fixed points. And now let's assume that this is not the case. So that, uh, um, the fix, there's, you see G has at least one fixed point, uh, outside our bar. But then you see this, this automatically implies that both, uh, both fixed points of G are in C bar minus R bar because G is an element of PSL2R. Right? So, I mean, not having having at least one fixed point outside our bar automatically tells me g has to be elliptic and the two fixed points have to be conjugate real numbers and um, okay uh, and now now we can find an element in psl 2 c now i'm i'm not asserting that the element is in r in psl 2 r uh, such that um you know that that takes the fixed points of g to a zero and infinity Right? And actually, actually, like since 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 I'm taking nu to take uh, the fixed points to 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 points that lie in R bar, I mean I can actually be sure that that this nu is not in PSL two R. Right? But anyway, um, now what we know is uh, is this. Right? Um, so both of them are given by multiplying by uh, complex numbers. But actually, since, since G and H are elliptic, I can actually say a little bit more. And it is that those complex numbers are actually on the unit circle. The complex numbers uh, that tell me this one is multiplying by one uh, by a complex number. And this one is given by multiplying by a complex number. Those two complex numbers, I can, I can actually uh, assert, I can, I can assure that uh, they are on, in the unit circle. In any case, uh, multiplying by uh, by complex numbers are, are functions that commute. So these ones commute, but then these ones commute. Right? And I'm done. I analyze uh, under this assumption, and I, I analyze all possible three cases. Uh, and in all of them, I uh, I reached my conclusion, my desired conclusion, which which is that. Uh, G and H uh, commute. So um, the theorem is uh, proof. Um, okay, and now, now uh, 
three three exercises, three I would say uh, easy exercises um, that that you probably you have a probably already uh, done in some other uh, course, um, namely uh, every discrete group of the additive group of real numbers uh, is cyclic. Of course, here with the usual topology. Um, every discrete subgroup of the multiplicative group of positive real numbers uh, is cyclic, every discrete subgroup is cyclic. Uh, which notice that if I if I write R minus zero, right? So the multiplicative this multiplicative um, group uh, uh, it is not true that all subgroups are um, cyclic. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, the next exercise is that every discrete subgroup of the circle is cyclic. Mm -hmm. So every discrete subgroup of, uh, of the real numbers uh, additive or positive multiplicative and of the unit circle, they are all cyclic. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and that plays a role in the proof of this uh, theorem, which says that every Fuchsian subgroup of PSL2R, so every uh, abelian discrete subgroup of PSL2R, is necessarily cyclic. Right? So, so somehow this means that that uh, this one doesn't have. Well, I, I mean, okay, no, I'm, I was going to say something uh, that uh, could actually lead to some confusion, so I prefer not to say. Um, I'm saying here uh, proof exercise 92. Let me briefly sketch uh, sketch it. The, it's the proof. Um, so take a, take a, take an abelian discrete subgroup of PSL2R. Mm -hmm. uh, since it's abelian, uh -huh, by uh, the previous theorem that we have just proved, um, all the non-identity elements of uh, gamma, since I'm assuming they commute, they all have the same set of fixed points in uh, in U bar, and also the, their action on C bar, they all have the same sets of fixed points. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, you see here is where where things uh, play a role. So, because you see, they all have the same set of fixed points. They all, all non-identity elements of uh, of gamma. Uh, but you see, in this case, in this case, I I can see that uh, the whole group is conjugate uh, in PSL two R actually. Uh, to the group of all horizontal translations. But think about it, the group of all horizontal translations is this group in disguise. Okay, so this means that gamma is gamma, which is discrete, is conjugate to a subgroup of this. That subgroup must be discrete because conjugation is a is a homeomorphism, right? So um, so that subgroup to which it is conjugate must be cyclic by this exercise. So gamma itself must be cyclic. Okay, and you see, and uh, now we use the, the fact that uh, these are horizontal, uh, and it's going to be similar in 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 in, uh, in, in the remaining cases. Right. So um, I know that. Uh, that all non-identity elements of gamma have the same set of fixed points. You see, in this case, what I see is that that uh, gamma is realized as a subgroup of the group of uh, Mobius transformations given by multiplying by positive scalars. But the group of Mobius transformations given by multiplying by positive scalars is this one in disguise. So gamma is discrete and it's conjugate to a subgroup of this one. That subgroup must be discrete and cyclic by the exercise. So gamma must be cyclic. And similarly, uh, if this is what happens uh, for the non-identity elements of gamma, 
then gamma is conjugate. Okay, I mean, okay, conjugate made in PSL two C mm -hmm. um, to a to a subgroup of the circle. Blah blah blah. It's it. Um, so we have this theorem, um, and and then you see you see why I leave it as an exercise, right? I mean, it's actually not, at this point it's an easy proof, um, although writing it would have taken me a lot of time, a lot of space. Um, okay, now notice that here I was very careful in saying discrete subgroup of PSL two R. So the theorem, this theorem, fails for SL2R. And so uh, the next exercise uh, asks you to, uh, to exhibit explicitly uh, a non-cyclic abelian discrete subgroup of SL2R. And it's not, uh, this one, mm, Kind of uh, made perhaps the level of difficulty I would say is maybe me me and medium, mm -hmm. uh, somewhat challenging I would say. Um, what maybe becomes more challenging because uh, it's kind of to find a subtlety is exercise 94. Uh, because exercise 93 tells me in particular that, as I said, uh, theorem this theorem, wh uh, while it is true for PSL2R, it fails for SL2R. And in exercise 94, uh, I ask you to find where, where, you know, what, what is it uh, that, what is it in this argument that, that I uh, 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 orally uh, uh, said, that I sketched, uh, 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 in, in, what is it in the in this in this that argument in the proof of the, of this theorem that it holds for PSL two R but fails for SL two R? Um, so this I would say is kind of um, maybe more more challenging because it it asks you to find a, a subtlety. Okay, but you see now. Um, now that we know that every abelian discrete subgroup of PSL2R is necessarily cyclic, we see that uh, there cannot be uh, um, an, um, a discrete subgroup of PSL2R isomorphic to Z plus Z, because this one is, is, is abelian but not cyclic. Right? And, OK, so this is. This, this, this is the corollary, which is immediate from the theorem. Okay. Um, okay, and this has uh, a very interesting consequence, which is this one. Namely, if you give me uh, a discrete subgroup of PSL2R, which is torsion-free, mm -hmm. torsion-free, which uh, that means that. Um, that the non-identity, any non-identity element of gamma uh, doesn't have any fixed point in U. That's, 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 uh, um, that's what, it, what this uh, ultimately means. Um, I mean, because torsion free tells me uh, all, all its uh, elements, all its non, all its non-identity elements uh, have an infinite order, mm -hmm. okay, but then none of them can be elliptic right? because uh, because um, if if they give me an elliptic uh, element of PSL2R, the subgroup if it generates uh, is discrete if and only if the element has finite order. Uh, so if if the non-identity elements don't have finite order, then none of them can be elliptic. Hence, uh, hence they cannot have fixed points in U. And you see, not ha them not having fixed points in U means that um, by one of the theorems that we prove, 
and uh, that the that the action of the of gamma on u is properly discontinuous uh, by this uh, by this theorem. But the action being properly discontinuous means, in particular, that uh, uh, this happens, right? But you see, but now the stabilizers uh, have to be all equal. Have they, 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 they must be all uh, trivial uh, because if the non-identity elements of gamma, if none of them has fixed points in U, that means that if you give me any point, uh, the only element that can fix it is the identity. So all the stabilizers are uh, trivial. But if all the stabilizers are trivial, you see what happens is that um, the, 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 the action is actually properly discontinuous in a strong sense. Right? So um, what I deduce, what I deduce from this assumption is that um, the projection from U to the, to the space of orbits of the action of gamma on U uh, is a covering map. Right? So the action being properly discontinuous in, in the strong sense means precisely that. I mean, ultimately leads to uh, this projection being a covering map. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, uh, now the, what the theorem says is that uh, in that case, which I already said what, what actually, what it actually implies, um, this space of orbit cannot be homeomorphic to a compact torus, right? So that the compact torus is a topological space, as you all know, uh, equal to this. Um, yeah. uh, just as topological space. Um, even as a, if you say even as a, as a differentiable manifold, if you like. Um, okay, so, so, uh, so, so if you give me a torsion fee, uh, if you give me a torsion free discrete subgroup of PSL2R, then the orbit space cannot be a compact torus. Mm -hmm. um, and the, and the proof, the proof, in, the proof involves, um, quite a few ingredients that we have not yet covered, uh, in the, in the, in the course. Uh, and, and actually, uh, it is my plan to to uh, to, co to to cover it in the uh, in in the subsequent chap in subsequent chapters. Um, but let me let me sketch it, uh, and I sketch it um, kind of for those of you who 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 are who who who, are, who have already uh, seen the basic theory of uh, covering spaces. Mm -hmm. So um, and yeah, and otherwise otherwise I I uh, I plan to. Um, I plan to, to cover the ingredients in the future. Okay, anyway, so, so take a torsion free discrete subgroup of PSL2R. Uh, so that, as I said, uh, the, the projection to the, to the uh, orbit space is a covering map. Mm -hmm. Now, U is, uh, it has all nice properties one can ask for, right? It is connected, path connected. Uh, locally, path connected, uh, uh, semi locally, simply connected, whatever, uh, but it is simply connected. Um, okay, so what we have is a, is a covering map whose domain is simply connected. Well, uh, we can deduce that actually this is the, the universal cover of the codomain. So, okay, so we have this universal cover. Um, but then, okay, but then, well, this we already know because uh, gamma is a, is a discrete subgroup of PSL2R. On the other hand, um, you see, this we would have to prove. Um, this, this, you see, I mean, um, this we will, we will, uh, we will go on, on into these details, into this, deep, into how this proof 
um, when we see uh, the chapter on covering spaces, uh -huh. theorem from the theory of covering spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and what we obtain is that, that then that uh, Z plus Z, which is the fundamental group of uh, compact toes, is not isomorphic to the fundamental group of the orbit space. So the orbit space cannot be homeomorphic to the compact toe. Um, okay, so this is the uh, 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 kind of the overall reasoning behind this theorem. Mm -hmm. And finally, let me uh, say somehow like a let's say, uh, the ultimate cons con consequence, um, geometric consequence, um, for which we would need even more uh, ingredients. Um, so this is, this is kind of just, let's say, as a kind of general culture fact, at least at this point. Um, hopefully, uh, we will be able to, to, uh, to cover the ingredients of this corollary uh, at some point of the course, and it is that that uh, if you give me a compact torus, let's say you give it to me as a as a C infinity manifold, let's say, I mean as a, as a differentiable manifold. Uh -huh. Okay, so it is impossible to find a Riemannian metric, uh, a complete Riemannian metric. So complete, let's say, as um, yeah, um, such that. The, the 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 torus becomes a, a surface of of negative curvature of constant negative curvature. Mm -hmm. So um, somehow it somehow let's say um, very informally what this means is that um, you cannot you cannot try to approach the torus using hyperbolic geometry or using the hyperbolic plane. You need something else, right? I mean, um, I mean, and we know we, it can be approached with, uh, with um, just with a complex plane, right? But somehow, okay, so far we knew that you cannot approach the torus with, um, uh, so far we know that you can approach the torus with, uh, with, um, with a complex plane, so with something flat. Um, but what we didn't know is whether you can approach it also from what, some other perspective, right? And the corollary says, okay, so at least from the hyperbolic perspective, you cannot approach the compactor. Um, okay, so so by 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 no means uh, do I pretend to 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 have already covered uh, what, for instance, what uh, this uh, uh, curvature means, for instance. Or even what complete Riemannian metric means. Right? So, um, so this is kind of a, this is just for a kind of a general knowledge, at least at this point of the, of the course. Um, yeah. So uh, here, here you see the pictures that you can see, um, like um, here. Um, okay. So that's all for uh, today.